What the fuck? This is the unimpressive, unappealing Dell Optiplex 7060, but there is a reason for its blandness. It's mainly used for POS systems. Oh, sorry, no, not that kind. Point of sale systems, as well as in corporations, because they use way less electricity than full fat towers, in turn making them more affordable, and are very good for light computing tasks like checking emails and browsing websites. Corporations don't have, well, a soul, but more importantly, they don't have gaming. And as we all know, we need gaming. So today, I'm going to be turning this unimpressive, unappealing, bland, soulless Dell Optiplex into the best compact gaming Steam box for free. The first step in my journey was creating the bootable media. For this, I'm going to use my trusty 32 gig flash drive, the one and only Rufus formatting software, and a copy of Bazai OS. If you're unsure of what Bazai is, it's a custom Fedora image that comes with Steam pre-installed and emulates the look and feel of Steam OS, which is very important for a Steam gaming box, so let's go ahead and get that installed. The second part of my journey was obviously installing Bazite. I've never used this OS before, but the installation went way smoother than expected, which is always welcome when it comes to SteamOS Linux distros. <clears throat> anyway. Okay, so to get Bazite installed, it should be pretty simple here. As you can see, I've already hit the install button and we've got a bunch of OKs and everything going on. So this is already going a lot better than some of my other installation videos, but it looks like we are installing or starting the installer. Uh, Anaconda 40.22, don't know what that means, but it's working. Shell is available in TTY2 and in second Tmux pain. That sounds like hacker stuff, because like, I never mess around with Linux, so you guys probably know what that means. Sounds like hacker stuff to a Windows user like me. <laughs> it did take a little bit to load into the Bazai installer, but we are here, and I will select English since I speak English, and I will select the disk and hit done, and we'll go ahead and enable that root account, because who knows, we might need it, and enable numlock, and put in my password here, We'll hit done. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to create a user just so that we have one set up right when we log in. And there we go. Simple as that. And we'll go ahead. And why can't I begin installation? Additional 2.42 gigs is needed. So I'm going to go ahead and get that taken care of. And then the next part should just be the installer going through its installation. And we'll come back after all of that is complete. Now we've come to the final part. Testing some games and getting a sense of what this little box can actually do. The first game is Rocket League. At first, I wanted to try all high settings. While I was sweating on the bots, being a bot myself, and getting smacked around like a pinata at a five-year-old's birthday party, you can see that my FPS did not hit above 20. But in this game, it's kind of a superpower because it's like playing the game in slow-mo, which is a huge advantage, albeit an annoying one. After that mess, I wanted to try and lower the settings to see how high I can get the FPS. I know this makes the game look worse, but I lowered everything to performance and immediately noticed that the game was much smoother, consistently reaching 20, even over 30 frames yes. per second, which to some isn't playable, but on this computer I would argue otherwise. Finally, just to see if I could boost the FPS any higher, I lowered the resolution to 720p. Yes, I had to go there. But honestly, this made the game very playable at over 40, sometimes even reaching 50 frames per second. The next game I tested was CS2. This one was, uh, let's just be happy this one launched. It hit an amazing zero Ooh. frames a second while loading and only managed to achieve anywhere from one to 12 frames per second in the menu. And I wanted to see if lowering the resolution or even graphics preset would remedy the low FPS issue, but. The whole thing is frozen. I literally cannot move the mouse. Well, on to the next game, I guess. Half-Life 2 started out beautifully and only had one hitch loading the start menu. I had this game set to native 1080p and was hitting anywhere from 30 all the way up to 60 frames per second. It was honestly pretty inconsistent, but inconsistency aside, I would still call this very, very playable. On to GTA 5. I had this one set to native 1080p as well and turned all settings down to normal. Hi, how are you? I finally loaded into the game and it immediately gave me Vietnam flashbacks to a few moments ago. I literally cannot move the mouse. Well, I hit W and the whole thing just died. But then I remembered something. Back in 2014, Steam introduced local game streaming. You might be saying, bro, 2014 was 10 years ago. Why are we talking about this now? 
And while that is true, some people still didn't know about this, and some people is me. And while I come to terms with my lack of Steam knowledge, I still wanted to tell you guys that this is a super great alternative for people who just want to maybe game on their laptop, or maybe just have a Dell Optiplex laying around that they wanted to turn into a Steam box for some reason. But anyways, I wanted to test some more games just to see if this local game streaming feature is actually viable. Again, the first game I tested was Rocket League. I knew that the game would run fine, but mostly what I was looking for was lag or packet loss since I'm streaming the game over my local network. But luckily, none of this ever occurred. No packet loss, no lag, and the game worked absolutely fantastically. Second up again was CS2, and yes, it actually launched. It ran beautifully as well with no packet loss or lag, and I was able to kill a few bots while I was testing the game. I haven't played this game in years, so please don't bully me for my gameplay. <laughs> and I'm sure that you could tell that Half-Life 2 was third again, and ran like a dream with no issues to speak of. Now what there is to speak of is me losing track of what I'm doing and trying to break the game. Now, I was not able to test GTA 5 while it is on Steam, and I do have it purchased on Steam. I don't have it downloaded to my main computer on Steam. I do have it on Epic Games, but they don't offer game streaming locally, so I'm not able to test it. Now, as you can see, when we run the games locally on the bare metal, you can see that it has some difficulties with GPU intensive games like GTA 5 or CS2, but can run CPU bound games like Rocket League or other esports titles pretty easily. Now, if you do want to get better performance, you could upgrade the CPU from the 4-core Intel i3-8100 and use an external GPU to replace the onboard Intel UHD 630 graphics, and I would definitely upgrade the 256GB M.2 drive, but for simplicity's sake, I just stuck with the OEM parts for this video. Now there is one way to get an even more compact gaming PC than what I showed you today. If you want to find out how to do that, make sure to go watch this video.